Welcome back to No Road episode, guys, and I'm finally gonna give you guys what you've been looking for. That is the un well, not really unveiling, but I'm finally gonna show you guys what the outcome of the Cutlass LSA Cutlass build is, the aka YouTube build. I know I showed you guys all the steps to it, man. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and check out those videos. I literally show you how I put this thing together, man, from, from brakes, um, engine, just everything, the whole nines. So uh it's been, oh, I'm going to say oh, going on two years, man. The car been completed. I just haven't had a chance to show you guys. I figured I'll do this right now since I finally got just a little bit of time on it. It's Labor Day. I promise I'm going to try to get to the videos. If you hit the subscribe button, if you really, uh, you know, digging this ride, go ahead and hit the like button, man. Let's jump right into this. I'm not going to hold you any longer, man. Let's jump right into this. Let's get it. All right, guys, if you don't know what you're looking at, man, this is my 1987 Oldsmobile Cutlass, a.k.a. the YouTube build, if you don't know what I'm talking about, man. This is a build that we started on channel a while ago, man. If you want to see all the parts, I'm going to show you some of that today, but if you really want to see all the parts and details of how we put this thing together, definitely go ahead and check out the other videos. We call this the YouTube build because at the time we were building a uh, Monte Carlo, also at the same exact time. On that Monte Carlo, we decided to use, like, just name brand parts, uh, and with this, I wanted to show you that you can still build something as great as quality as any of these shops are building without having to go Super Nan brand with anything. If you've seen this car before, it was gray with uh, red pinstripes. It's now, I want to say like a, it's hard to say, man. It's just like a sky blue with a, a, a pearl on it, man. I, the base was definitely like a, a sky blue, uh, you know, for sure. Went over the hot, uh, hot scots, hot scots, man. Y'all excuse me, that. hot shots, man. And they, they mixed me up this paint. I think you can get it off the shelf from, but y'all gonna have to hit them up and see for yourself, man. But we decided to go with the Ashantis right here, man. These are 24 inch Ashantis, you know. They're over here masking the massive 14 inch Z06 rotors with the uh, C5 uh, Corvette. Actually, these ain't the Corvette ones. I got these off the Camaros, but they're the same exact one. The only difference is the Corvette say Corvette around them, but those are the dual pistons, calipers, big brakes in the front. Again, this was supposed to be a YouTube build, not really a uh, you know high budget, man. This was supposed to be a real low budget, and this is what you get in it. And no corners were really cut, to tell you the truth, but uh, that's what you got, man. Those things are just massive. Can no longer put those stock 15-inch rotors. Again, uh, not rotors, but tires on the car because the rotors alone are 14 inches with the uh, caliper. Uh, I think you need to clear at least 20 inches to get over that, man. I have very minor rust, nothing crazy, so it wasn't really too much to correct in the body. But Panda did his thing. I uh, finally got my emblem on. I was looking for one of these things for years. I know they make them now, but when I bought this a couple years ago, you, we really couldn't find it. So this is an original one. I want to go ahead and show you guys this uh, badge right there. That's the Cuddy V logo man this is the youtube car this is the youtube bill but this is her name right here man cuddy v all right so in here man i don't have the uh stars on right now you should see it in the b-roll or you should have seen it already but i uh, went ahead went with the suede roof again a local guy he's not on ig or anything like that uh did my entire interior he actually done many of the interiors in my city man if you're from boynton then you already know poppy get it in man it's uh chico by the name of uh leo man dominican old school guy still does everything by hand and this is what we ended up with man and again it ain't clean you know if i if y'all had to wait for me to clean it, it just wasn't gonna happen so uh we got this gray with the blue stitchings to match uh kevin did some of these interior pieces man so you'll see like the door panel shots of the kevin another local guy um he do good work uh but you know what I'm saying? He just needs to get with me. There's a couple points and tips I want to give him, man, just to make sure business run like it's supposed to, man. Because I waited a very long time to get him. But uh, at the end of the day, uh, he did his thing. Uh, it wasn't really nothing too, too, too massive. But it did delay me a little bit. But that is what it is. We have the Dakota Digital Dash. So, yeah, everything worked like it's supposed to. Boost gauge is also on there. That's not something else we had to buy on separate. This right here is the radio bezel that I made. I'm planning on making a couple more of these and getting them out. I did a couple prototypes that I finally landed with this. This is 3D printed uh, bezel, made it myself for the uh, double den. Make sure it was able to clear 
when the screen open AC is still in the factory location got to massage that in the back a little bit to bring it up a little bit I still have my uh, cigarette lighter over here I want to show you guys this you know what I'm saying some can say why would you show this but I still have to make a bracket to, to hold up the fuse block for the wire harness but my wire harness came from PSI that's what that is and this is my custom fuse panel man so if I remove this this is where everything for your, the internals. So uh, my seats, my windows, my windows were original roll-ups, but these are power windows now. Uh, I did go ahead and use, I don't know if you could tell, but there's a little bulge somewhere, like right here. I did use the uh, roll-up kit that everybody else uses. Uh, they're cheap on eBay. I know there's a common problem with them where they uh, stop working, but um, I have a quick solution for that and I've relocated them here. And the way the problem with that is they seem to go out every now and then or get real slow. But what you can do is remake the relays. You know what I'm saying? Make your own harness. Don't use the box that it come with. Just use the mechanical part that goes onto the window regulator. Wire them yourself. I have a diagram up at some point if you want to know how to do it. Reach out to me. You can add your own buttons or use the buttons that it came with. But for sure, you need to add your own relay. That little board switch that comes with it, all that trash trash believe me trash i made a video on it on how to do this my bad y'all can go watch that video it's that same kit however you do need to do your own wiring and right here man this is first in the world i'm gonna show you guys this man this is a double den radio looks like your standard one but check this thing out though check this thing out yeah y'all ain't seen one of these yeah i know y'all ain't seen one of these and if you did you ain't seen it in the cutlass I don't want to hit first. I was the first to do this. You know what I'm saying? Just like I ain't never see a hose for the superchargers until I post it on the internet, man. Clear hose for the superchargers. Yeah, I can say I was the first to put that in a uh, in an old school, man. A G body, man. Y'all see this right here? I'm planning on making some of these, man. It's just been uh, taking, you know, a lot of my time. I'm planning to do some of these, but a lot of my stuff has just been, you know what I'm saying? Just off the wall off the wall another custom piece guys that i did was the vents right here still working on a final design i have a uh you could call it a filler that i i will be putting behind this that's going to be painted the same color of the car i think it'll make it stand out but i also uh created this yes it is 3d printed uh you just have what i created i'll give you guys an option to buy from me you just have to make sure you use the right material something that can withstand heat and something that is very uh resistant to just outdoor elements past that man i know you guys probably wanted these are 2000 uh i want to say oh these are 2010 camaro uh rs seats man this is what they are um just nothing special about them other than the fact that it's power all the power does work not only that but you know i do like the fact that i don't need the power to get that open and get people in these are another set of door rests that were custom made by kevin uh, i was supposed to add the led lights in here haven't really got a chance to get around to that but uh for right now we just have the camaro uh 2010 camaro rear seats in here also uh it's being held in by this thick cushion uh I'm supposed to be linking them with Kevin so we can go ahead and get a custom piece here, the custom deck here uh, with possibly the same rear deck design, the same one that's on the door to be running down there. So right now this is temporary just to hold the seats in. Um, it's not yet like fastened in any ways, but with the cushions, everything's nice and tight. Obviously it ain't crash rated, but um, you know, Fingers crossed, we ain't never got to experience that in this thing. Ultimately, guys, man, this is it, man. Real super clean. Uh, just the gray, factory gray accents uh, all over the place. This is factory steering wheel. Everybody's going to ask, why don't I get the uh, steering wheel rims? I'm not really a fan of them. So I don't know. I just always felt like that's too much, right? Whenever you do the steering wheel, I feel like you're just trying to do too much. Uh, there is a billet one that I really like. I'm going to get it. Yeah, I know if you've seen the price of them, they cost the same uh, maybe $50 less to get to call up a Shanti and get a uh, matching steering wheel, but uh, That's just not what I'm trying to do man. If I could actually find a real clean original steering wheel uh, That's great. Like mine's not bad, but like all the plastic that was in here is really like eating away But uh, if I could find that I would definitely keep my steering wheel. I did the The gray carpets to match. You know what I'm saying? I got to get some carpet. These are the factory seat belts. That's the dark gray uh you know to match the carpet 
So I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty much, pretty much what it, what you see, man. So let me get you guys a look at the hood, and then we'll see what else we can get into. Here we go, man, it's the power plant. It's everything you've seen in the previous videos. Again, if you don't have not seen any of those videos and you uh, definitely go check out the video if you want to know the specs. But this is, uh, started off as an LQ9 uh, uh, through a LSA blower on it off of CTS V2014. Um, slightly worked heads, obviously, you know, cams, springs, the whole, you know, works for that, man. So that's what you kind of end up with went with the uh lsx concepts race drive system so they do have two the race drive is a manual uh pulley tensioner and the other one is a spring loaded so this is a slightly a bit more expensive but it is what it is so that's what we use for this that's what we use for the ac to get the ac going on this this side uh we have a holly uh bracket this was the original bracket I had on here when I originally did the swap maybe five years or so ago. I was able to just remove the spacer that it comes with and it, it, it aligned just perfect. You know what I'm saying? If you want to know what that is, I don't remember the part number. You can watch my old videos or you can get a C5, uh, C6 uh, Corvette bracket. For now, uh, I got to go back to that on performance. They're going to actually custom make me uh, intake pipe. For now, this is what's on it. Just a rubber boot, intake pipe that I had laying around, filter, power steering. I had to relocate here because it typically mounts right above here on these brackets and I just couldn't keep that. Uh, clear hoses, everybody. Yes, I was the first to put these on the old school. Uh, somebody showed me proof that it was done before this and I got the receipts that I was. Because after I posted this, everybody hit me up at, on YouTube, on Facebook, and then I started seeing everywhere else. Cool. Think what you want to think. It's all good. Um, not being catty or anything about it just want to put it out there uh these hoses if you want them i'll put a link to the description you can either get them on amazon or i believe home depot have them but if you decide to go with anyone uh another brand or anything else that you want that's fine just make sure that they are uh high heat rated okay they have to be high heat rated or you know if once the fluid get kind of hot they'll get real soggy i've seen a couple of people's cars that way so I have a cash can. I haven't got a chance to actually get it wired up yet um, in a sense of routing the hose. I have a one inch hose right here, just laying right there. I just haven't got around to it, guys. It's like still a little ins and outs. I finished this car, got a dyno, and I just never got back to it. Reservoir fans again, guys. These fans are from a Dodge and Turpet uh, 99, I want to say. They work great. The only thing with them is, problem I have with them is I want to remove the relays that they came with. Uh, they're like these programmable relays that I don't have the computer for. I managed to get them to work. Uh, however, there's a slight little issue of I have to turn them on in sort of like a sequence, right? So at some point, what I'm going to do is uh, pop out a few of those wires and just run relays regular. Yes, the computer still controls them. It's just when the AC comes on, like there's, there's a sequence. So I don't want to get all into that right now. That's just what it is. Still got the factory AC. Um, everything is running like it should. This is a boost gauge sensor right here. What this allows the dash, the, the code additional, the, just tell me the boost levels. Man, I also have a hob switch here that's not connected. It was, but um, at the power level that I am right now, I decided to turn it off because I don't actually need uh, two pumps on all the time right now. So, but this is what the hop switch is for. So the hop switch is so you don't have to have two pumps on at all times. It will only kick on the second pump once you reach a certain boost level. We didn't use this when we were tuning. Uh, we pretty much maxed out that, uh, that single pump. And right before we went, connect the, uh, the boost line to this and get this dialed in. The uh, tranny started slipping, if you remember from the dyno uh, video. It's a 460 in it. So it just was at its power limit. The, the, the tranny is safe. Nothing's wrong with it. It just got kind of hot and, and, and you know after 40 some passes uh on the dyno that you know it started slipping so we just stopped i have a 480 sitting on the ground at the shop again i just don't have the time to get to it this thing is running and since we're talking about the dyno uh everyone has been asking what is the dyno number right and honestly guys i did 650 and change uh, i don't remember the brand like 
656 or 658 uh, or something like that, right? So that's what I did on a 4L60. Everybody keep telling you that these 4L60s ain't no good, man. Let's be realistic. How A lot of people do not need nothing more than a 4L60. I didn't do anything crazy. This was a stock rebuild with stock parts. You know what I'm saying? Stock, stock rated parts. And this thing just ate it. There was nothing wrong with it, man. It was built properly. It holds the power. It still holds it now. And, you know, it's running like it's supposed to, man. So that's just what it is. At some point, I'm going to go ahead and change out the tranny. Then that will allow us to go ahead and get it back on the dyno and just up, up, up the game. You know what I'm saying? Like the, the goal right now is, is to do eights. Um, I have a couple of tricks off my sleeves. And that's just what it's going to be. So I really don't need more than that. This is a street car. I don't really plan on racing it unless I catch you at the red light, man. This would definitely be a red light killer. So uh, if you ever do want to line up with me, just catch me at a light. And for sure, I'm going to give you what you're looking for. So, so yeah, guys. So as we start to end this, man, I just want to let you guys know I apologize. I know it's been a while. It's really been uh, a lot going on. As you can see, it's a new scenery. I'm in front of my house. I still have the shop. I'm planning on moving it. I don't know what I'm doing yet because of, I moved, essentially. I've been moving. I have other personal stuff going on in my life. YouTube just have not been a priority. Same reason why this car has, uh, it's still sitting here. You know what I'm saying? Two years later and it's just been sitting here, hasn't been driven. Um, fully functional, works. I took it out to a couple car shows, uh, local car shows, but nothing really big. So um, we're gonna get to that. I uh, plan on getting back to the YouTube. So consider this the back out video, man. I got a couple different style of videos coming. So you guys stay tuned. Definitely let me know if you liking the content, if you want to see me come back, what you want to see and all of that, man. But just know, stay tuned, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, man. Show me that you still rock with your boy. And I'm going to show the love back. Let's get it.